also comes into this insanity. Feds say company discriminated against illegals orders back pay. This, this kind of stuff scares me because as a business owner and someone who does massive amounts of investing and everything like that, this really scares me. Obama will perform Big Brother compliance monitoring of company. The Justice Department says Nebraska Beef discriminated against an illegal alien, a bunch of illegal alien workers, actually, by asking them for proof of citizenship. They discriminated against the workers who are illegals by asking them for proof of citizenship. It goes on to say the DOJ's Office of Special Counsel for Immigration-Related Unfair Employment Practices objected to non-U.S. citizens being targeted because of their citizen status. The illegal aliens are being targeted because they're illegal aliens. So now they're going to have to pay them money. Nebraska Beef is going to have to pay them money. It's hard to run a business these days. It's, it's, it's honestly almost not profitable in most cases. And I wasn't even going to plug, but Alex doesn't get outside funding. He, this is all self-made. He funds it all himself. He doesn't take much profit, to be honest with you. And he doesn't like to say that on air. He really does not. He puts all of it pretty much back into this operation. I would encourage you personally from my heart to go to InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com, and also go to InfoWars.com slash Moneybomb because Alex, it, he doesn't promote it enough because he doesn't plug enough because he wants to cover all the news and he wants to talk to you guys, understandably so. But he doesn't plug enough that he's doing a Moneybomb in September. It's InfoWars.com slash Moneybomb. September 17th is the date. 16th, I apologize. September 16th is the date for the InfoWars Moneybomb. And you can actually start donating today, and it will count, and you'll see it live on there towards the money bomb on September 16th. But anyway, in closing, I had to talk about that because it's just so impossible now to have business these days. Illegal immigrants can sue you for asking if they're illegal immigrants. That is the United States of America that we're in right now. There's a reason that companies are collapsing and the economy is going down the toilet because of things like that. Now, I want to go to some calls. I want to talk to Brandon in Texas because he has a response. Alex had a message for Louis Farrakhan, which I think was balanced and, and really, really good because he said, hey, Farrakhan, I'm not your enemy. I, you've said some good things, but it does seem like you're calling to kill cops and others and inciting your, your followers who trust you and believe you to go out and kill people, which is totally insane. It goes back to what I was saying earlier. You guys need to go back to kindergarten, everyone who's saying kill cops and kill white people and learn basic human values. Brandon, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, man, I agree with you, Anthony. You're doing a good job, buddy. Um, as Thank far you. as Farrakhan goes, if Alex has him on the show and does debate him, I really hope he turns up the heat because I really felt like he played it safe with David Duke and just let him talk more than he should have. Um, and I definitely think that Farrakhan can kind of play the whole semantic game and kind of sound like he's kind of on message, and he really means well, like Alex said in his little um, his little speech. But the guy is extremely radical, so... If he does have him on the show, I really think Alex needs to turn up the heat, and I think most of the viewers you know, wanted to see him do that with David Duke, and he didn't. So that's just what I have to say. You're doing a great job, man. Right, and I, and I can – well, thank you. I can understand, by the way, <clears throat> a lot of my black friends have had periods of time where they just really did think a lot of things were racist because there is real racism, and they would think, oh, that white person is being racist towards me because they've actually been you know, the subject of racism – but myself, growing up in Philadelphia, outside of not just one, but two nearby murder capitals of the United States, Camden, New Jersey, and Chester, Pennsylvania, I happen to know a thing or two about racism in the terms of black people being racist towards whites. And there's been numerous instances where I've experienced that firsthand, as Alex said, too, growing up in Dallas in a serious physical way. But I'm not skewed to this day coming up here saying because they beat me up or whatever, that I hate black people. And Louis Farrakhan, also, I believe, you know, you can't just say because of a cop, one white cop that did something to a black person that was unarmed or whatever, that all white people are bad. That's just not how this works. And it goes back to going to kindergarten and getting a kindergarten education on basic human respect. We've got Stephen from Florida. What's your take, Stephen? Yeah, hi, uh, Anthony. Uh, I wanted to say this about this issue with they're kind of this whole race war they're pushing. A couple things. First of all, uh, um, I don't like Farrakhan simply for the fact that he just 
does not come across to me as genuine. I think he's a showman, and he capitalizes on tragic situations for his own personal profit. He has an agenda, and that is just fostering his own, you know, ego. Uh, I, I have nothing against the guy because of the color of his skin. And let me say this. I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus Christ. And my God, Jesus, is colorblind. He made all men of all colors, and he died for the whole world. So anybody that wants to claim they're a Christian and yet they're trying to push some kind of race issue based on skin color, ethnicity, whatever, you're not a true Christian. You're not a true believer in the one true God. Now, that being said, I want to make people aware. I just talked to a friend of mine in Texas this morning. Not, he lives not too far from Houston. There's a man in Houston. He's an activist, a black man. His name's Quan L. X. He's kind of a junior Farrakhan, but he's not as extreme as Farrakhan. And any time there's any kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, in bad intent toward people of color, he immediately speaks out and takes up on their behalf. He's not making extremist statements like, you know, Farrakhan, obviously, like, we need to kill them if they're killing us, et cetera. But the thing I wanted to say is that this, this deputy in Houston who was just killed, Quan out to his uh, credit, has actually rallied the black community there in Houston. They are having the funeral for this man. Today, and he's actually out there in support of this Hey, man. so guess what? Actually, but, apparently we had this guy on the show. Alex had this guy on the Alex Jones show in 2013. So the producers know who you're talking about. And I would also say, well, yeah, they better speak out about, against killing a cop at a gas station. I mean, if you're not, if you're on the team, you're on the team that's for shooting random cops at a gas station because they're white, uh, that's not a winning team. You, you better be against that. I, oh, wow. He's against that. Uh, he better be, Steve. Don't you think so? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, because, you know, again... How can you, you know, distinguish and make statements and judgments? I mean, that's what the word prejudice means. You prejudge. You don't judge a book by its cover. Like, you know, Martin Luther King said, you judge it by the character. And this is what's not brought up in this whole Black Lives Matter thing, because, again, it's fostered by a Nazi, George Soros, who's a white guy who's using these brainwashed black people to further the agenda of the New World Order. That's what they need to wake up. That's right, Steve. Thank you for your call. Let's go to Doug in Minnesota, who's got another take on this issue. Hey, kudos, Steve. That's, you, you hit it on the head. Yeah, Steve did a great what job. The black, what the black people has got to understand, this is a white guy that hates everybody. And and he's his agenda is to create problems. They need to look at that. And and as far as Alex and Farrakhan, I mean, they both had good points. And Alex, like he said, you got to join together. Take the take the mega banks and our government as an example. Hey look Doug, do you do you think for a minute though? Do you think that most people really buy in to this fake race war? Don't you think most people kind of don't believe in it and they want to come together? Or do you think this is really what's going on? Smart people don't buy into it. But like, like Alex said, there are people out there that have been brainwashed or just they, they look around their, their surroundings and they, they feel helpless. They say, what have I got to live for? There's nothing out there for us. There's no jobs. There's nothing. Like, so, like Bryce Williams, the news shooter. I mean, unfortunately, it seems like most of these people that are out there killing cops or killing others, trying to start a race war, whatever it is, they're just complete losers. They have nothing to live for, and it all ties into your life's purpose, really. I mean, if you're just a loser, unfortunately, for a lot of these people, and I say harsh words because, I mean, they're out here killing people. If you're just a loser and you have no life and you have no passion, you don't know what you want to do, and you're just jealous of everyone and envious and greedy and uh you're going to want to go out and do bad things. That's why all the school shooters not only have doped up on pharmaceutical drugs that are known to link to aggression and things like that, but they're always angry enemies of everyone else. And it, if you just find your life's passion and decide you want to help people, that all goes away. So many people say they can't do things. I can't do this. I can't do it. I wish I could do it. If you just decide for a minute that you have a mission in your life, all those other things are in your peripheral. If those people who decided to, like the new shooter, killing someone because he wanted their job, right? If he actually sat down and decided to be passionate and help others and do his own reports and become like alternative media or something like that, he could probably have been a star. 
but he decided to kill two people instead of doing that. And for those who kill cops at gas stations, he could have done something with his life. If he really wanted to push race equality, which all he did was the opposite, by the way, by killing a white person for no reason. If he really wanted to push race equality, he could start a foundation or make YouTube videos with a cell phone talking about how we need to come together and, and love one another. That's what this program is about. You notice what I've been saying for these past two hours is that we need to come together, not fueling the Black Lives clashing of police and protesters who just want to further inequality and destroy the human spirit that pushes us. So I encourage everyone out there to be part of humanity and join the fight for coming together as opposed to fueling all this madness. We'll be back on The Alex Jones Show. Next up, we're going to keep taking calls. We're going to switch subject matter a little bit and talk about some more news breaking on Drudge Report, Infowars.com, and more. Stay tuned. Welcome back to The Alex Jones Show. I'm Anthony Gucciardi sitting in for Alex. And what we're going to do is we're going to reopen the phone lines. We're going to switch gears. Last segment, we were talking about Louis Farrakhan and what's going on with the call to kill white people across the globe and tweet, uh, Twitter users saying kill all the white people, purge them, so on and so forth. Total insanity and how we really need to just come back to the passion of the human spirit and come together. I'm going to open the phone lines again specifically, though. I want to hear your awakening aha moment story. I want to hear... What led you to realize there's something wrong here with our society, our government, our system, and led you to realize what was really going on, whether it's with the food supply, in the world economy, in immigration reform, anything. I want to hear all of your stories. I remember years ago what led me to all of this. The, real, the tip of the spear for me that plunged into my gut was when I got Lyme disease. I was so sick that I went to sleep and I took a quote unquote nap for 24 hours. And I went to the doctor and he told me the only thing I could do was take steroids. So there's nothing else you can do. Nothing else will work. You're, 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 you're really <laughs> you're screwed, right? And I said, that's, there's no way that's the case because these steroids I'm taking are making me feel terrible. I mean, I was just vomiting. I really thought I was going to die. He goes, well, you should probably go to the hospital, but here's, keep taking these steroids. I went online. There was like nothing online at the time. And I tried to find stuff about natural cures. And what could I possibly do? And I learned that these pharmaceutical drugs I was taking, well, gee, they're loaded with toxic garbage. And I learned about things like oregano oil and colloidal silver, which I started taking. I just put that in my protocol. And I was like, well, maybe I should buy this organic food. And my friends and family were like, oh, you're insane. That's just a trend. It's just a, a way to steal your money, all that kind of stuff. And I told my doctor I was going to try it. And he told me I was totally crazy. He says, you're... You're nuts. It's not going to do anything. You should just you should stop wasting your time. Just listen to me. I've gone to Harvard. I know what I'm talking about. You're just some stupid kid that doesn't know what he's he's thinking. So I tried it and it actually worked. You know, in like 42 hours, I was feeling better. The natural solutions worked. And I went to my doctor and he told me I was insane. Once again, I was, there's no possible way. Now he is a listener to the Alex Jones show and watches my videos and takes products at InfoWars Life. Dot com. You can't make this stuff up, right? So now it seems it's so much more accepted all of these things are true. It seems so much more accepted that alternative medicine is the real deal. It seems so much more accepted that the corruption at the deepest levels of our government is pouring through the disgusting cracks in this establishment. All of this is so real. And that's why I opened up your calls to hear about your awakening story. Because for me, it was it was kind of like Waking up from a, a dream and realizing all this insanity out there, it's somewhat overwhelming, but at the same time, it's also fulfilling and a great thing to do. A lot of uh, people use the cave analogy by Plato. But anyway, so we're going to start some calls and listen to your waking up experience. And we're also going to cover some news. We've got stacks and stacks of news here from Infowars.com. I want to play a video as well. There's a lot to get to in this segment. It's a loaded, loaded segment, and we're going to come back on the long segment and cover more. So first of all, let's go to Chris in Carolina. He wants to talk about his awakening story. What's up, Chris? Hey, how's it going? Great. Tell us your story. Um, it's kind of a, you know, I, when 9-11 happened, I was uh, awake yet, uh, and uh, I was still in my, in my late teens, I guess, and uh, early 20s. And, uh, you know, it kind of happened, and you know, I didn't think much of it at the time. I watched Loose Change, and then a while went on. And um, a few years ago, I saw uh, Jesse Ventura's show on uh, one of the TV networks. I can't remember which channel it came on, but they were having a marathon that day. 
and uh, I sat and watched the whole marathon. I was like, wow. And then 